Okay, you can begin the meeting now. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. We will call a regular uh, meeting of council for March 9th, 2021 to order. And could I remind everybody please to turn their devices off or put them in silent mode. Uh, the land acknowledgement, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples who have been stewards of the land since time immemorial. And as such, we treat the land, its plants, animals, stories, and people with honor and respect. So we'll have the playing of O Canada, please. Silence, please. Thank you, everybody. Councillor Wiggins, glad to see that you've uh, joined us back today. So uh, today we have regrets from uh, Councillor Barry McGibbon and Councillor Val Miles will be uh, joining us shortly. So uh, my comments for the day. So majority of my comments today center around the COVID situation in our area. We are pleased that our region has managed to remain in the green zone, the most favorable possible. I'd like to thank all our residents and visitors for respecting and adhering to public health guidelines and recommendations. It's obviously working. You only have to look north of us to a, another rural urban community that has experienced a high rate of infection due to reported and isolated incidents of not following public health guidelines. We are aware that the last year has been very trying for many, including our local business community. The evolving guidelines can be very confusing to interpret and the onus on enforcement is placed on those allowing patrons in. So I ask everyone to respect the position of our local business sector that our local business sector is in and please follow the guidelines. We all want to have easy access to local services and stay as far away as possible from the greater lockdown zone that restricts capacity. We're inching daily towards much better weather and the ability to move about more freely. So I ask everyone to please be patient and help us to get to the finish line without going backwards and respect the position that everyone is in. On the vaccine front, the news appears to be getting more encouraging. Vaccinations have occurred at our long-term care facility with some frontline workers also receiving the vaccine. Public health and local health providers are working diligently to establish a location and more widespread vaccination program that will hopefully be in full operation on or before the end of the month. Uh, those 60 and over can go to the public health website to pre-register for the vaccine and it'll let you know when you will be, it'll be available to you. So again, I state that all signs and actions are moving in the right direction and please be patient and respectful to ensure that we keep the end in sight. On today's agenda, we have a couple of delegations. First will be a presentation on everything you want to know about 211 and the services available through this program. After that will be the annual presentation from the North Hastings Public Library. 
And today we'll also be tabling our 2021 operating and capital budgets for council approval. Thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved of the open session agenda dated March 9th, 2021 as presented. Could I have a uh, mover and a seconder on that, please? Uh, Councillor Caulfield and Councillor Tracy McGibbon, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interest and nature thereof. Seeing none, okay. So we will have our first delegation and uh, the end is, uh, is Tracy here. Tracy is here. Um, I see that she's unmuted. Uh, there she is. Hi, okay. Tracy. <laughs> Would Hello, you like Tracy, me? how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Uh, very good, thank you. Well, thank you for uh, coming today to uh, uh, bring this uh, to our attention, because I do believe there's a lot of people who are not aware of what this all means, et cetera. So I'm sure you're going to educate us on this. So. <laughs> yeah. So what it all means and how it can help um, in your region, as well as how it can help moving forward with planning for the municipalities and towns, et cetera, for funding and, and needs, et cetera. Um, I, I know that we all realize um, we're spread thin these days and so if a resource can be out there to help um, I'm hoping that this uh, that you find this useful and um, and as it gets utilized more and more um, how the data from it will be able to help our region um, help those that need uh, especially our most vulnerable. Um, first I would really like to thank uh, Mayor Jenkins for taking my phone call on the road the first time I called to talk about 211. Um, he was in his car and kindly uh, took some time to talk to me about this. And I want to thank you for your recognition of 211 Day um, on your social medias. Um, I will have a report to you uh, by the end of the week. I was waiting for some more stats on social media and penetration as far as how far spread uh, the message got in our region. Um, we did a great job, and I don't know if you noticed, uh, 211 Day was February 11th, and it was recognized uh, both on the federal level by the Prime Minister as well on the regional level um, by Minister Smith, as well as Doug Ford um, had a really good a message out there. So the push around 211 is, is there. Um, first, I would um, I work for Volunteer and Information Quinney, and we do... Uh, Normally have a satellite office up there um, due to COVID and some some restraints. We've on, on not been able to be up there as much as we want. We are still offering virtual help. Um, so from that point of view, we are still in the community. I am the manager of information services for Volunteer and Information Quinney, and as Volunteer and Information Quinney has been the data provider for two one one for quite a number of years now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch into sort of the 211 side of things. But if there's any questions afterwards, by all means, um, let me know. Uh, so if I'm going to screen share. I hope that's okay. No problem. Can everybody see this okay? We're good. Okay, perfect. Okay, so 211. Um, I'm not sure... If everybody's aware of, of 211 or, or what it is, um, it has been around for quite a long time, but there's been an increased focus on it. Uh, so this is a presentation geared to uh, one, reviewing the sort of where 211 came from, as well as some of the strides we've made in the last year and where we're looking at this going forward. A lot of people don't realize how many 1-1 numbers there are actually out there. Um, the CRTC has numbers from 2-1-1, 3 5-1-1, most notably are 4 one one and your 9-1-1s. Um, 2 one one was originally designed to be, it was designed originally to help alleviate some of the non-emergency calls um, from 9-1-1. So 2 one one is that free information and referral service to community, social, health-related, and government services. So it's your, it's your human services helpline. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
and it's available in 150 different languages. So we do have access to translators all at all times. So if somebody's coming in and needs a different language, we, we can access them. Usually it takes about five minutes. One of the things that people don't realize is how trained our 211 staff are. So our information and re referral specialists are trained. Uh, they go through a four month training process and they have to pass an exam so that they understand the air standards of what the information is that they're accessing and how to understand it and how to track it and how to make those referrals. This is some of the accreditations that they have to pass um, in order to be one of our uh, specialists. Our information and referral specialists are designed, um, originally when it first started out, they were answering the calls and, and making those referrals. We have evolved quite a bit in the last year. Um, not only are we making those, answering those calls, making those referrals, but we are, we have modified our programming to also, if it's, it's what we deem sort of that high needs, or if we're any concern that the person is not maybe understood where we needed to refer them, or if there, were, if there was just any question, they are doing a follow-up program now that they weren't doing before to help ensure that people are being one referred to the appropriate services, as well as that the services have taken them on, or if not, tracking why that is. The big thing with 211 and as a result of the pandemic, 211 before 2020 was available in most parts of Canada. Um, but the pandemic hit and the federal government uh, recognized that there needed to be a little bit stronger funding towards us. Uh, so they worked in partnership with the United Way and they have expanded 211 through all areas of Canada. So now we're available coast to coast to coast. And that's important. The reason that we're really trying to put that out there too is because people might be aware of services in their community, but if they move, this is another option for them to find the same service in the new community. Or if you've got somebody that is looking to help somebody within um, their current community, or for my example, I use, um, I'm originally from Sudbury. I've been out of Sudbury for 25 years. My mom had some knee surgery and needed some resources. I actually used 211 to find the resources in the region that she needed. I knew what they were here, but I didn't know what they were in Sudbury. So that helped me help her. So that's another sort of asset with the 211 system. Three components, public inquiries, the online directory, and the next component, and I think this is going to be the, the component that's gonna help us the most moving forward is the caller needs and the stats that we're actually tracking. Public inquiry, yes, call us. We all know phone number is there. 211, easy. They have the, the TTY numbers and, uh, and all of that. And the people on the other line can help with complex needs as well as simple needs. And the other thing to understand is that there is a um, mess, there is an understanding between volunteer and information clinic and 211. If it is a really complex need and they're having a lot of trouble helping the, 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 the caller, they will refer them back to volunteer and information clinic for local assistance. 211 is expanded though, because of the increased funding, we recognize that there's other options out there that people need. Um, I know sometimes I live, I live in Wooler, which you'd think would have somewhat good internet and I have terrible internet. I'm actually surprised at how great you guys are <laughs> because when I'm in Wooler, I could not have been doing a Zoom call. Um, but with the increased sort of capacity that people are looking for accessing um, services, 211 is taken on and not only becoming just a number, with the online option, they can now chat live. So if somebody is not comfortable making that call and wants to do an online chat, they can do that as well as they can now email and get some services. So if it's just a simple inquiry, they can have, there's the email access as well. So they can have that interaction with one of our agents. There is a text option that's being piloted in Southwestern Ontario. And we are hoping that that will roll out before the end of the next quarter. Um, and that will be a huge option for helping people connect with the needs in their area. Where I want to sort of point out sort of what we've done for an improvement locally is Volunteer and Information Quinny has taken it on in the last little bit. When, when the COVID um, crisis happened, 
we, we partnered with United Way of Hastings, Prince Edward right away um, to find um, what we considered, what we called them COVID-19 essential listings in our area and made these listings up. And I combed um, Facebook websites to get their current and, and, and sort of requirements, were they open, were they not open, that type of thing. Um, and we, we put that together. The one sort of drawback was that my, my software that I was using and the two on one software were two different softwares. Um, so what we've done in the time that's happened in the last year, because I am also the fundraising director and couldn't run dancing with the stars and uh, all of our fundraisers we've taken and we've taken um, and modified and transitioned to the exact same software as two one one, as well as updated our website. So there's the two one one website, two one one .ca, but now you also have a data website that is a local portal. That's really friendly. So the new VIQ website with the database of community authors offers you a direct link to two one one, but it also is just a local database that people that we can use to keep our local um, clients involved. What I've done here is we've modified this so that you can search by topic. And I am working with all the agencies in the area to make these topics to be that, that place they can go to find the needs. 211, as much as it is for the general public, it is also for agencies. Um, I'm meeting with police officers. If you don't know where to turn, I've got 1400 records on there um, and, and expanding. So please, we're here to help. This is an example of a Bancroft agency. So uh, the North Hastings Community Cupboard, I do have uh, the record on there. This is how nice it looks. It comes up with the information, the location, the map, the contact information, all of the, so that's the ages. And then there, there's your food bank information. Very easy, very easy to read, direct links in, nice and simple. So this is what is on the VIQ website as well as the 211 website. Updating is so simple these days. If it's not right or if it doesn't add up, we want to hear from you. So pass that around. I know locally you are the champions for what's in the region. Um, normally we have Irene up there plugging away and bugging people for updates. Um, and she's still... She's still helping us out. So, um, but there's, this is just, it's the, the, the resource is there for us and we want to make it the best we can. The, where we see this being um, a very positive asset for the community and a very positive aspect for the, like your municipal affairs is the fact that we are tracking the data will give you the information you need moving forward. So, on the 211 website now, you can actually go and find their business intelligence. So they can go, you can go in and I can scan it by region. So you can actually pull Bancroft out completely and find out what were the needs, what were the calls, what were the top five. You can find the unmet needs. So here is an example of the unmet needs last year in all of 211. And the reason for the unmet needs was it there's no resource available, ineligible for service, too long of a wait list. So this information is at our fingertips. The more that we can get people to use 211, the more data we will have as a, as a community to be able to service, especially those most vulnerable and those programs that you might need in your, in your area. I see you all looking at the screen. It's very, this is really cool information. It is very easy to find. Um, www.211ontario.ca at the very top, it says 211 data, and you can go into this at any point and, and filter through. If anybody wants help with it, I'm a phone call away and happy to go through it with you um, to make sure that, that you can see sort of where we're at. Any questions? Do you want to put the? Um... I can stop sharing. Yep. Yes, there you go. We can see. I can see if anybody has any okay. questions. So, any questions from anybody? Uh, to tell you the truth, I learned a great deal there. I was not completely aware of the scope of uh, mm -hmm. what this does, etc. So, for that, I uh, I, I thank you. And uh, no problem. And we're really uh, this this sort of awareness piece of two one one. The United Way of Hastings and Prince Edward recognizes that 
our region's very vast. So originally I was only sort of be going to be doing these presentations and this outreach for the first um, 10 weeks of the year, but we've expanded it till the end of June. So I will be coming up as soon as it's safe to do so, to do some more outreaches at the agencies. Um, we have been working really hard to, we've been putting um, like locally in the food banks, the CDCs, anything like that. They've been putting the 211 brochures in, um, in their food boxes, in the baby boxes, getting the message out there. Um, I'm getting posters on the buses. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to the police services. I will be up. I am reaching out to, to all the police services in the area to do trainings with platoons get the information out there so that you guys can have the stats and the data you need um, in order to, to help uh, your community. Great. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Tracy, uh, I chair Com Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee for the town. And I, I think we had someone speak about two and one. It's gotta be two, three years ago at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps uh, you could attend by Zoom one of our, our meetings and uh, bring everyone up to date on that. We have, I would, we have, we have uh, all of the schools involved, the principals involved, and and the, and the agencies as well as the OPP. So that might be a, a, a way of getting it out there a little bit sooner as well. I would love that. Do you mind if I reach out to you and, and set that up? I, I am looking to present wherever I can present. Nope, that'd be fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. I, uh, I'm presenting to, so addictions and mental health is having me present to all of their addiction specialists. So I know I will be presenting to uh, their staff from the Bancroft office next week. Um, we are really working to get this out there. And, and the more it's utilized, the more stats we have. It's that, you know, cart before the horse situation, the people, the, and the resources are there. Some of them are there and, and I'm not going to lie to you. Um, some of my reps, uh, we were on a call with the um, Ottawa group the other day and and they do they have people crying because we all know it's it is tough right now um there's wait lists and, and that but they're tracking that and getting it to us and getting that information to us quite quickly so that we can help find the resources on our end great thank you any thank you. other questions okay well thank you very much tracy we appreciate your time and uh charles will set that up for you to uh, to come to our uh community safety meeting perfect perfect well you guys have a great day enjoy the nice weather hopefully it's nice and warm yes. up there too it's supposed to be yes, a great week yeah and then beautiful. those those plants behind you will grow back there you go yes have a great day well they're growing right now it's a little warmer up here <laughs> tracy just for your information tracy our next meeting is uh the 20 the 24th of march at nine o'clock perfect i can be there okay i will reach out okay. to you and we'll get that sorted out great okay Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Could I have a motion to accept the presentation, please? Uh, Councillor McGibbon, second by Councillor Caulfield. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, so next up we have North Hastings Public Library, and I believe that Kim McMunn is hiding somewhere back there. There you go. So, Kim, the, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Or the screen, I should say the screen is yours. Okay. <laughs> True enough. Good afternoon, yep. Your Worship and Council. Great to see you again. Wish we were there in person. It's uh, We make the best out of what we have to do here. Um, it's been an interesting year since we connected last. Uh, real roller coaster for library staff for the first time. Since I know of, the province mandated that our service had to close last year in March. And I think that I don't know of any other time in our history, and we have been here officially this year, we've been here 120 years. So that was a real first for us. Another first for us was the uh, province and the federal government deciding that they would support a new build and provide funding for us to get there. So we've seen the high of the high and the lows of the lows this year. While we were closed, we created barriers and social distancing and staff went through and did a major collection overhaul to make sure we have enough room for growth in this building until we can get a new one built. Um, we, uh, as I said, we've been closed. We were closed for a short period of time. We opened late spring and we've been curbside service 
on and off with intermittent entry by appointment. Last week, we opened our doors fully. Um, we still would prefer people make appointments for the computers because our, our space is a bit limited there for social distancing purposes. In the last year, we've saw a huge shift in online usage and a drift from in-house visits, as you can imagine. And as expected, we are seeing a gradual shift in learning. Uh, people are moving towards manipulatives and digital resources, and we're moving with it as budget permits. We expanded our experiential collection, adding more puzzles and games and other learning manipulatives. Our budget was impacted greatly over the last year as we couldn't generate fees from our operations with services like copying and our book sales. Uh, fundraising was kind of frowned upon due to the number of people that were going to be out of work and it was kind of discouraged in a lot of circles. So we were very, very low on the fundraising corner. But we did manage to secure two grants from the Prince Edward County Communities Foundation of Canada. They were under the Emergency Community Support Fund. One of them was for $10,000. And with that, we replaced all of our computers and we put in computers with washable keyboards and mice. The second grant was for 12,500. And with that one, we put in two new children's literacy computers with customized software. And we also, uh, with the balance of that fund, we've been updating our uh, book collection to support um, the new curriculum pieces that we didn't have and update what we did have. We had a few donations, which was wonderful. We didn't really solicit for them, but there were a lot of people that came forward. With some of those resources, we increased our e-resources. So um, we added the Canadian Reference Centre and Britannica online for our students. And we added two do-it-yourself sites for hobbies and crafts and home improvements, as they seem to be two topics that are very, very dear to our library patrons. In the spring, my board challenged me to change our leadership style here, moving towards wellness in the workplace. In the fall, I found resilient civic leadership, compassionate integrity training for civic leaders. My classmates were a mayor, councillors, municipal employees, and another librarian, and they were located all across Canada. I received my certificate in this course in November and signed on for the second phase, which is facilitation. And now my cohorts are in Berlin, London, India, Madrid, Texas, and another librarian from Ontario. Uh, from this, our operations are moving to a people business mindset instead of a book business mindset. So it's going to be quite a shift for us, but as the new building comes about, I think you're going to see the change in operations, and I think you'll be quite pleased with what we offer. The board, um, just as they perceived, we needed to change the culture of our library, and it needed to be a grassroots start, and I think this course is going to give it to us. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, the new build was funded um, through grant funding through the provincial and federal government. Uh, by fall, we learned that of five libraries that applied, ours was the only one that did not get a letter saying, sorry, um, you didn't make it this time. So based on that information, we formed a build committee. And on that committee is myself, a board member, Brian Hickey, who represents Bancroft, our youth advocate, Emma Defoe, who was mentioned in our annual report, the town of director, sorry, the town director of corporate services clerk, Leanne Souter, facilities department head, Pat Hoover, Malcolm Hunt, the town's community development advisor, and Melanie Wright, an engaged community member active in uh, economic development. Our floor plan in its final stages, it's almost finished and ready to go. 
we're moving our space from under 2,500 square feet to a little better than 4,000 square feet. We'll have a community room learning commons that's accessible after hours. We're gonna have a public washroom with a change table, something we've wanted for a very, very long time, but didn't have room for. We will have a multi-purpose digital um, space combined with a maker space. A lot of libraries have these. We've never had room for that in our current building. We will be accessible, which is something that we've been asking for for years and years. We'll have an out, adjoining outdoor program space. Um, this will be off the children's area where they'll be able to walk out. And I think that there's gonna be a second entrance to that as well, so that you'll be able to sit in the morning sun and catch up on the Wi-Fi with your computers, or we can have programming in that space as well. And we're planning to make our furniture mobile to allow for the space to be reconfigured for multi-purpose usage. So it's gonna be an exciting build. We're very, very excited to uh, be in this process. We received 750,000 from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Communities and 625,000 from the federal government. Our grant requires that we pay back 500,000, but since the quote was almost two years old and building costs have skyrocketed, we expect that we're gonna to have to cover a little bit more than that. Um, what else is new is that we have Natalie Phillips. She joined our team after Louise Graff had to resign in November of last year. And we increased her hours, not a big increase, but we increased it from five hours to 10 to 15. And she's working on online engagement as we have a much, uh, much bigger audience there than we used to have. We're changing our automation software our current software wasn't tracking properly and the new software was also going to give us some services we didn't have in the past. We'll be able to provide mobile service and we'll be able to add other libraries if, it, uh, if you know, the opportunity occurs that somebody else decides that it's too costly to do a small library, they could possibly join ours down the road. So not to say that it is gonna happen, but the opportunity is available. So we're thinking of the future as we do these things. This software will also integrate with community room bookings. It integrates with other companies and it opens up more options than just keeping an inventory of books. It has a friendlier user face. It was designed for use in schools and it's maker face, makerspace friendly. So it'll be easy for the public to utilize as well. And it's also RFID compatible. And if you're not familiar with that term, that's the uh, technology that when you go into a retail store and when you're leaving that annoying little gate buzzes at you, we'll probably be looking at something like that in the new building as well. The new library supply companies um, have started to surface. And I saw those at the library conference. They uh, are catering to maker spaces and homeschooling. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the new resources from those library companies will be utilized in our future. We will be engaging our extended community with this build. We've already started a new Facebook page. Uh, I believe it's the North Hastings um, um, North Hastings Library and Community Hub, I think is how it's listed. And we will be putting a campaign page on our library web website for the fundraising piece. All of that stuff is in process. We have a lot of things going on here and lots to share, but I wanted to leave some time for council um, in case they had some questions. So I'd like to open the floor. Any questions from anybody? Well, I think you're doing such a thorough job, Kim, you've already, you're answering them before we have a chance to ask. So <laughs> we'll let you continue on. Thank you. Well, I did send our annual report and our strategic plan, which has been newly passed. We have a new mission, vision, and values, and that's much reflected in the course that I'm taking as well. So I hope you like the new direction we're working, and I look forward to uh, 
seeing more of you as the new build progresses. And thank you for your time today. Well, Kim, thank you for all the work you've done and for uh, really getting the, uh, the library up to speed and positioning us for, to take full advantage of, uh, of the new build. And as we've said on the library board, it's, uh, it's not your, uh, your mother, your grandmother's uh, library anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it, it certainly it's, isn't. It, it's certainly going to be a, a library to, uh, to meet the needs of today and uh, the future library as well. So we're pretty excited about seeing that. So uh, again, thank you very kindly. Thank you. And thank you, Council. Okay. So uh, we have a resolution here, be resolved, the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby received a presentation from the North Hastings Public Library for information purposes only. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Deputy Mayor and a seconder, Councillor Tracy McGibbon, all in favor? Thank you and pass. Uh, minutes of previous uh, sessions. First item, be it resolved, the Council of the Court Pressure Town of Bancroft is hereby approved with the minutes of the meetings of council held on February 9th, 2021 and March 3rd, 2021 as presented. Uh, could I have a mover and a seconder to put that on the table, please? Uh, Councillor Wiggins, Councillor Caulfield, is there any uh, errors, omissions, questions or comments on that? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you. Uh, item eight, minutes of standing committees and verbal updates. The first is committee of the whole, committee of the whole committee. We have a number of resolutions here. We'll deal with them one at a time. The first resolution is be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meetings held on February 11, 2021, February 23rd, 2021, and March 3rd, 2021 as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Wigan, seconded by Councillor Tracy McGibbon and the individual business uh, put forth by those um, various meetings will, sh will show up below. So all in favor of that first resolution, please. Thank you and pass. Uh, second resolution, be it resolved that council approve the purchase of the roll off truck and trailer from Highland Service for the purpose of transporting compacted bins. Could I have a mover and a seconder please? Councillor Wiggins and seconded by Councillor Mullet. Um, Public Works Manager Kelly, I'm assuming you're there. Maybe I caught him asleep. <laughs> Maybe yawning, but not asleep. <laughs> okay, just could you very quickly, I know we've dealt with this, but just for anybody in the public who may be out there who's not aware of this, just give us uh, a very brief Coles Notes version of this, okay? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of council and uh, staff. So this is a process that we've been going through to uh, to secure the roll-off truck and trailer that is currently contracted by our contractor Highland Service for the movement of our compacted bins to uh, from our facility on Pinnacle Road to our MRF on uh, in Belleville, Ontario. That is a current cost of about sixty-five thousand uh, dollars annually that we pay out, and um, our contractor had expressed an interest in. Um, stopping doing that process. So we went through uh, a vigorous process to uh, price another contractor, uh, use uh, to purchase a used roll-off truck and trailer or purchase a new roll-off truck and trailer. And we did a return on investment uh, with, the, with the forward look of uh, moving into uh, a different type of a commercial collection as well. But this first, uh, first part of this is just for the actual purchase and acquiring of the roll-off truck and trailer for those purposes of uh, trucking our own compacted bins. And this is, just to mention, this is for our recycling material, for anybody who's not aware of that. Correct, uh, Mr. Mayor, for all of our recycling, yes. Okay, thank you. Any uh, follow-up questions from any members of council? Seeing none, all in favor, please. And it passes. Thank you, thank you, Perry. Uh, the next resolution is be it resolved the council approve the request of stewards of Bancroft Eagles Nest Park Inc. to remit their insurance payment directly to Hudson Henderson Insurance Brokers for the year 2021. Could I have a uh, mover and a seconder on this, please? Councillor Caulfield moves and seconded by 
uh, uh, by Councillor Wiggins. Uh, I, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. It's something we've done, uh, we did last year as well. And um, just want to take this opportunity to mention all the great work that's been uh, done up there and the great uh, publicity and uh, attendance that we're getting up there, even though we had a very abbreviated season last year. So uh, looking forward to great things this year. So if there are no questions on that, uh, all in favor, please. Thank you, pass. Uh, so the next item is be resolved that the 2021 operating capital budget for the town of Bancroft be approved as revised. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Uh, Councillor Caulfield seconded by. Uh, Councillor Tracy McGibbon and I would ask the treasurer if you would uh, give us a little, uh, give a little background to everybody on the process that's led us to where we are today. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, councillors, and, and uh, colleagues in, in public. So just, just a, a bit of a snippet. Uh, we actually uh, began uh, the budget process in October of 2020. Um, so it's been a five-month uh, process, pretty arduous, um, et cetera. We ended up presenting the capital uh, budget in uh, November uh, 24th to the Committee of the Whole. Um, and uh, we involved the entire management team, obviously other staff, input from other important stakeholders and, and partners and suppliers uh, as part of the process. We really did do a line by line uh, budgeting process, uh, bottoms up. Um, we just didn't, and we also compared to uh, last year's budget, the, the actuals. Um, so as I said, uh, November 24th was our first kick with the capital budget, it was a public session. Uh, followed by February the 11th, uh, a little over a month ago, uh, Committee of the Whole, uh, again, a public session. Uh, we had a number of uh, questions, um, comments, um, challenges from, uh, from Council, and we came back uh, March the 3rd, <clears throat> presented a revised budget uh, accordingly, uh, which was ultimately passed and, uh, 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 and uh, recommended that uh, Council approved, and that's where we are today. We also invited public input um, over the last week. Um, and um, according to our clerk, um, we, we we've received uh, no input as part of our comments as part of the that that process. Um, thank you. Thank you very kindly. So some specifics from that will it will uh, follow this resolution and subsequent resolution. So we have a mover and a seconder. Uh, is there any further questions to the treasurer before we take a vote? So seeing none, all in favor, please. It passes, thank you very kindly. So as a part of that, some specific resolutions, the first one be resolved that a reserve charge of 175,000 be recorded in the 2020 financials to the corporate services initiatives reserve to be released in 2021 and applied against the asset management project for the town of Bancroft be approved as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Caulfield and seconded by Councillor Tracy McGibbon. Is there any questions on that from anybody? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Passes, thank you. Uh, the next resolution is be it resolved that reserve charges be implemented in the 2020 financials for the following. Fire equipment capital reserve $60,000. Parks equipment reserve $30,000. Recreation equipment reserve $15,000. Land cool equipment reserve $50,000. Roads equipment reserve of $60,000. And election reserve of $5,000. Totaling $220,000 for the town of Bancroft be approved as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Councillor Wiggins and Councillor Miles, is there any questions for the treasurer uh, on that one? I know we've already dealt with this extensively to committed a whole. If, is there any follow-up questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you, it passes. And the last resolution is be it resolved that council approve the Bancroft Business Improvement Area budget as presented, giving the Bancroft Business improvement area, the option to communicate with their members, uh, the desire for the full amount increase of 18%, although the within the budget, the increase is much less than that. So 
Um, could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Uh, Councillor Caulfield moved and Councillor Miles second. Uh, any other questions from anybody on that? Um, seeing none, uh, all in favor, please. Thank you. Next item is the Bancroft Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee. Uh, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the minutes of the Bancroft Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee held on February 24th, 2021, as presented. And it, could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Moved Your by worship. Deputy. Yes. I believe there was one resolution missed there. Ah, which one? Oh, the on. BIA. No, we did that at the end. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed did the mover and seconder. <laughs> oh, okay. Who? I think it was moved by Councillor Caulfield and it was seconded by Councillor Miles. Thank you, my okay, apologies. Hey, you usually catch me. I'm glad we got you once. <laughs> okay, you are human. Uh, now I've lost where I was. What was I doing? Oh, I was in community safety well being. Yeah, you moved that, did you not, Councillor Mullen? Yes, I did. And Councillor Wiggins uh, seconded that. And of course, we uh, have various resolutions to fall from that. Did you want to speak on this before we deal with the individual resolutions? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say a few words. Yeah, we had okay. a, a good meeting. <clears throat> we had a very good meeting. Uh, we we had heard that uh, through through the staff, the the detachment commander, that the the calls for service were way up again. Of course, which means dollars for us. Uh, we had a, a written report. Um, uh, about Bass, the the, uh, the the local table, we had that done. We had a whoops, and we also had a um, um, tri board transportation. We we had a uh, <coughs> a letter and, and some information about the the light changes on the buses. So we there's a resolution coming forward from that as well, and uh, the the it was brought forward by the. But she saw her the previous uh, meeting uh, that the um, there's a new uh, expansion of community paramedics for long-term care program in Hastings and Prince Edward County, and he did say that would be um, some of that would be done in the north as well. I think that's uh, that's it for that. Um, and, and now we have some, the resolution. Do you want to go into the resolutions? Uh, I'll. I need to pass this one first, yep. and then we'll deal with the individual resolutions. And if anybody'd like to comment on those as well, we can do that. Okay. Fine. Great. Okay. So, um, is there any, if there's any questions for the deputy mayor that are not being covered by the three resolutions that follows, uh, I would open them up to him right now. Seeing none. So, all in favor. Thank you kindly. The next resolution that we have is be it resolved that. Council Direct Staff prepare a letter to the Ministry of Transportation advocating changes to the Highway Traffic Act with respect to requiring all school buses to feature an amber and red warning light combination to enhance the understanding of school bus warning signals. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that resolution, please? Councillor Miles and seconded by Councillor Caulfield. So you did already mention that one, uh, Deputy Mayor. I think it's pretty self-explanatory there. Um, so I'll if, did you want to add anything to it? Or are you good? Oh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. They're, they're, they're pushing to do, do it late, so yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. All in favor on that one, please. Pass, thank you. Next resolution we have is be it resolved that council direct staff prepare a letter to youth, uh, youth Habit Habitation Quinty Inc. and Addictions and Mental Health Services, Hastings Prince Edward requesting <laughs> that services provided through the youth substance use support and treatment service be expanded to include the bank Roft area. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Moved by Councillor Caulfield, seconded by Deputy Mayor. Did anybody want to speak on that one? Um, I'll, I'll speak, I'll say a few words and, and perhaps someone else okay. will carry on. Uh, that was brought forward by Sarah um, from, the, from the, the youth group. Uh, they, she was under the understanding that, that this was being presented in, in the south part of the county, but not in the north. So we thought we would try and put some pressure on the, on the, on the people who have that say, and, and we need that in the north as well. So that's why that resolution came forward. Okay, good, thank you. Any questions? 
All in favor? Thank you and pass. And the last one, be it resolved that council appoint an individual uh, to, for representation of the Bancroft Business Improvement Area Board of Management as a community advisor member to the Bancroft Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Moved by Councillor Kaufeld, seconded by Councillor Wiggins. A any comments or questions on that? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Pass, thank you. Uh, minutes of local boards and joint committees, North Hastings Community Center Arena Commission, be it resolved that Council of the Corporation Town of Bancroft is hereby received the minutes of the North Hastings Community Center Arena Commission meeting held on February 10th, 2021, as presented. And Councillor Miles, you'd like to move that? Uh, yes, I would, Mr. Mayor. And seconded by uh, Councillor Kaufeld. So Councillor Miles, would you speak to that in any other uh, arena business that you'd like to bring us up to speed on? Yes, I would, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize to councils and any uh, members, uh, the public there watching and any guests we have here today. Uh, uh, tardiness and uh, I, I apologize about that. Uh, the arena, since uh, that meeting is uh, now open, we have people going in with lots of uh, COVID protocol and uh, the rink is being used. So that's an awesome thing. Uh, as we've spoken, there is some direction towards uh, working with the arena for um, a gym on the second floor, like all kinds of uh, well laid plans. We've come across a bit of a snag with the arena. So we are in the process of sort of uh, trying to figure out what our next steps could be. It has to do with access to the second floor. And as simple as we all might think that a lift should be able to accommodate what our uh, needs are, it does not. And it's simply because of the width of a staircase. So we are taking into consideration um, a, a full exterior lift, a full interior lift, probably not, or a set of uh, fire doors to accommodate. And that's where the issue stands. It's with code and with uh, what fire code finds acceptable when this uh, piece of apparatus that we're gonna use for accessibility is in the way. And, and of course it's about safety for our community. So we still have to navigate through that. Uh, we're, we're, everybody's working hard to make it happen. It is something we believe has a lot of, um, makes a lot of sense for the community. And that's really what the Arena Commission has been uh, working towards, uh, along with the family health team, along with um, our fire chief and our uh, our building officer. And so thank you to uh, everybody who's contributing to try and make this happen at the arena. But that's, uh, that's really what our meeting has been, our meetings have been consumed with, and we're hoping that, uh, and maybe there's a way we can sort of start the gym and work through some of our access pieces. We do have a time frame within legislation that it gives us, that gives us a bit of time but uh, still all to be navigated, but that's sort of where our focus has been at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is any questions for Councillor Miles on that? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you, Pops. Next is the Bancroft Business Improvement Area. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby received the minutes of the Bancroft Business Improvement Area Board of Management meeting held on January 28, 2021 as presented. And uh, Councillor Caulfield, you will move that? I will. And seconded by Councillor Tracy McGibbon. Would you like to talk about that or any other BIA business that you would care to discuss? Sure, there's a couple of uh, items in here that I just wanna bring to everybody's attention. First of all, we just approved the motion um, or the resolution from the Community Safety Wellbeing Committee um, that arose out of these minutes in particular where the BBIA felt that representation from the business community um, at the Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee was appropriate uh, given the current state of affairs in the world and not just in our town. So uh, that's where that came from. The other thing that I hope you will notice, um, we did approve a pilot, I guess, to say we would like to eventually light all four gateway gardens uh, with solar lighting that would last 18 hours. So it would be lit all the time that it was dull or dark, even in the winter. Um, so we're going to pilot that installation on at the uh, gateway garden by the OPP Town Works building on 28 South this year. Um, and if that works well, then we will continue with the other three gardens in the future. So um, that will be uh, quite an investment in that garden and I think it'll be really nice to have that lit up 
all night long. You know, you'll always see that you're coming into Bancroft and see those garden signs lit. So um, that's it there. Um, later on, we're going to talk about, or I guess, yeah, we're going to chat about the letters received from the BBIA from the subsequent meeting um, with regard to budget and that kind of stuff. But it's an agenda item, so I will leave that conversation till then. Great. Well, very good news about the uh, gateway lighting. You know, I, I actually did not realize you were working on that. And I've had some requests recently from uh, from some folks about that happening. So it must have been mental telepathy that made it through. So there was a, an inexpensive way to do it, which would have given us six to eight hours of light. Or there was the proper way to do it, which guarantees that there's always light there, regardless of the weather conditions. Um, it's quite a bit more expensive, but we think that it's worth the investment in those gardens and in uh, creating that welcoming atmosphere as you arrive at town. I guess the only question I have with respect to it is uh, uh, that they're going to be secured well into the ground so that they're not easily uh, movable. Yeah, we've had that conversation with the electrician who will be doing the work or the solar guy and yeah, nothing will be movable. Um, most of the stuff I think is actually encased and buried. Um, so it's not even accessible or visible. Um, so it's not just a light stuck in the ground. There's way more infrastructure to it than that. So. Good. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for uh, Councillor Kaufeld on this topic or other topics? Seeing none, all in favor, please. And pass. Thank you. Uh, item C, Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance be resolved that Council, the Corporation, the Town of Bancroft is hereby receive the minutes of the Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance meeting held on January 14, 2021 as presented. Councillor Wiggins, you will move that and seconded by somebody, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Wiggins, would you care to discuss that report? Uh, I'd like to uh, just mention, uh, as I say, everyone has it, they've had a chance to read it. There is uh, a couple of highlights I'd like to uh, mention is uh, the main focus we've been dealing with and with the county, uh, we've been trying to get a, an agreement for with the OFATV, which is Ontario Federation of ATVers, uh, regarding uh, riding trails in, in Hastings County uh, to try to promote tourism to the north. There was a release uh, present, uh, sent out by county, and if you will, I'll read it to you. Hastings County is pleased to announce the Eastern Ontario Alliance and the Ontario Federation of All Terrain Vehicles signed a memorandum of understanding to use the Hastings County Trails. This agreement applies to Hastings County Trails, which extend from Trenton River in the south to Lake St. Peter in the north. It also applies to the Trans Canada Rail Trail Line that stretches across Hastings County's east and west. We want to thank the OFTA and the EFTA for collaboration on this agreement following and expanding the opportunities in Eastern Ontario. This will allow uh, ATVers uh, that uh, have valid permits to travel on the uh, trails in, in Eastern Ontario in uh, EOTA territory. You need a pass for EOTA pass or an OFATV pass for Ontario uh, Hastings County trails only. Your EOTA pass will allow you to travel all of EOTA trails. Uh, any questions other than that, I'd like to answer this time. Any, uh, Deputy Mayor. Just, just one question, <clears throat> Councilor Wigan. Is, is the, the, the sale of the, of the passes now, uh, who, who, is there more funding coming in other than just from the county or, uh, and the sale of, of trail passes from, from, from EOTA? to do the do the brushing doing the maintenance on these trails at this at, at this time as far as i know uh hastings county has uh stepped up to help with the uh added cost of, of uh or added possible uh, loss of sales of permits uh that will allow the ofa tv to ride on our trails for free uh the ofa tv associations which they're uh as it indicates across Ontario, there are many clubs. They are a club that deals uh, basically strictly with ATVs, where you're aware of the EOTA is a multi-use trail. 
and uh, it's funded by many sources, but one of the big permits is the permit sales, I say one of the sources. So we're uh, dancing with that over the next year or so to see where that goes. Um, but that's by buying an EOTA pass, it, it will help uh, maintain the trails. Good, thanks. Councilor Miles. Not to get too much into the weeds, um, but you know, um, uh, Councillor Wiggins, has there any been, is there ever any chatter about the sale of a pass at the same time as a sale of a vehicle? Uh, I mean, you're only going to ride it on the trail. Uh, uh, think of how, what the, the process might look like if every time you bought one, every time it changed hands, you have to buy, a, you have to buy a pass. And those funds are then filtered into these groups in a way. It's the same with the snowmobile. I've often wondered, you know, this process of breaking up all of the pass purchases, really hard to do. Uh, it, you know, does anybody ever talk about sort of pass at purchase at the time of the vehicle going? There's been no discussion of that at the, uh, uh, the board of directors for EOTA at this point in time. However, <clears throat> we do have a interior recreation uh, committee, Ontario Trails uh, Recreation Committee, under part of it as uh, I'm a representative on that from EOTA. And the long range goal here, uh, and I might also add that uh, the Eastern Ontario County's uh, Warden's Cou Council also is working on a one pass system, which I think the only way it'll ever work, it has to be at the province level. Uh, much fashioned a bit under the snowmobile uh, operation where you buy a pass and that money is then filtered back through on the number of trails that you actually maintain and, and use it as maintenance. Uh, we're working hard on that and the government's well aware we've been working on it for probably that I'm aware of for about four years and it's just a matter of happening and it will happen someday I'm sure and it would stop each club uh, selling passes and trying to keep money in their own pocket, et cetera, et cetera. I, I'd also like to relay a little story that uh, I, I shared with Councillor Wiggins was uh, when this announcement was put through about EOTA and OFA TV that I received a call from a, uh, uh, a constituent in town who was upset that he, they would have to now buy a pass, which, uh, what, which I then informed them they should have been buying a pass for the last 15 years that it was required. So, and uh, Councillor Wiggins and I have talked about this many times about the need for some, maybe some signage even in town where folks access the trail in Bancroft to, to really put forth the message that you are required to buy a pass to ride on the trail and that you're subject to a fine if you don't. Because uh, I personally believe that a lot of people are not aware, are not aware of that, you know, Etc. So that's probably one of the quickest ways we can get revenue up is just to get people who are currently riding it to buy a pass like they should have been, you know, all these years. So anyway, I think thank Councilor you, Wiggins, you were going to run with that one. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And uh, I do have a meeting on uh, Thursday with EOTA and I'll bring that up. But I do uh, thank you again for uh, stressing the fact that we, we need to buy passes. And uh, I, I think it's a, it's a very, very important thing for our area to have the ATVs, uh, uh, as well as the snowmobiles running those trails. And those trails don't just happen, they're built and maintained. And it's a, a tremendous amount of money goes into them. And uh, when you buy a pass, it's, uh, it certainly helps. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Councillor Wiggins on this? Seeing none, all in favor? So item 10, unfinished business, there is none. Item 11, business, there's a number of items there. So I, I think we'll take a five minute break and we reconvene in five minutes, please. Thank you.
So we're just waiting on Councillor Miles. Okay. Can you folks hear me? Okay, I can't. It's dead silence. So, okay. Okay, we will uh, continue on. Uh, item 11 business, turtle related community matters, 2021 Bancroft, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby received a letter from Think Turtle Conservation Initiative for discussion purposes only. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Tracy McGibbon and Councillor Kaufelt. So, this looks letter looks like something out of the Pentagon Papers with all the with the redaction on it right there. So uh, maybe the so are Leanne and Perry. I believe that you two are going to comment on this. So I can explain the redaction first of all. So um, Kelly uh, Wallace, when she sent this information, she asked for the redaction because there are eight turtle species native to Ontario that are uh, federally designated as species at risk. Um, so seven of the eight, I guess, in question are designated as such, um, and they're also provincially designated at risk. So there's some harm potentially in publicly disclosing the exact locations of the concentrated turtle activity. Uh, so they are doing everything they can to protect the whereabouts of these turtles. Um, although the snapping turtle hunt was officially terminated by the MNRF uh, in March of 2017, there are still people who um, do try to engage in illegal poaching activities. Uh, so there was some concern that if um, the exact location of the um, area of concern was, was made known that there'd be a potential for increased poaching activity. So that explains the redaction. So anything that is redacted would give away the location of where they're speaking about. But I can say it is in Lamab, the area that they're concerned that uh, this letter is, is written in concern. <laughs> Four, uh, and uh, there's some options there at the end of the letter that um, they were she was hoping council would consider. So. Okay, so uh, Perry, I re I'm assuming you're going to address this as well. Uh, I don't have any comment at this time, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so what's the process for looking at these options? Are you going to take it back and then uh, review it? Is that the the plan here? Staff can certainly do that if that's council's wish and for us to review the various options. Sure. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate, you know, et cetera. Is any questions from anybody? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, that was item A. Item B, Bancroft Lions Club roll, Road Toll Fundraiser Request. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the Bancroft Lions request to conduct a road toll fundraiser on Station Street on Saturday, May 22nd, 2021, and October 9th, 2021, between 9 a.m. and 12 a.m. with profit with pro proper COVID-19 protocols in place. Could I have a mover in a second? Please? Councillor Wiggins and Deputy Mayor and um, would anybody like to speak to this, please? Councillor Wiggins, please. I, I, I think the lines are great and help the community. I'm just a little concerned with the, especially the one in May with COVID still being, I think will be active at that time. I'm wondering how we can, uh, although they're saying a proper COVID uh, uh, protocols would be in place, would that be up to our fire chief to determine what that would happen and how it would happen if it was safe to do so on that date. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Leanne answer that, but I, I'm in agreement with you um, on, on this point here. I think um, you, know, you could have people driving through town from a, a, a gray zone that had no intention of stopping here, et cetera, and they, they, they could be stopped. So Leanne, I'll let you address this as well. I was just going to say that the health unit has been excellent in working with uh, the various groups that have elected to plan, although they haven't been able to actually go through with uh, the fundraising tolls for various reasons, but the health unit has been able to provide guidance and work with the organizers. So we would request that that same process be followed for these dates and they would, um, they would be the ones who would, who would uh, make sure that all of the proper protocols were in place or let us know that the, they couldn't be achieved and it would have to be postponed. 
I don't know. I still have an issue with the May date, regardless. You know, I'm I'm not sure of you know of the uh, the message that's sending out. That's just my opinion. I invite anybody else's as well. Uh, Councillor Miles. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I sort of have a view of all of our uh, our our public events, our our live meetings, our sort of what feels like back to normal. Uh, it, it, it just shouldn't happen until sort of, a, and I'm not a doctor and I'm not the health department, but you know, until there's assurances that like, you know, 80% of the population is vaccinated or numbers are so low that it's not happening anywhere, or there is sort of some standard that says everything is safe, go back. You, you, you know, somebody makes that kind of a statement that's out, then I think all kinds of things uh, in all kinds of ways should just be delayed uh, another six, seven, eight months until we get to that point. I don't know that everybody's going to be vaccinated by May. Uh, I, I'm well, I, I'm not so sure. Well, I'm confident we're not going to be actually. So uh, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a favor. And then the next date is uh, an as C kind of thing. Deputy Mayor, you had your hand up as well. Yep. Thank thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I agree with the comments that have already been made. I, I think it's a bit premature. Uh, yes, we can we can go with the uh, public health there, the authority. But I think just <clears throat> on a public notice that uh, we're not doing much of anything else. I don't think it's People coming through, uh, it, it, to me, it, it's, it's, it's an unnecessary risk. Yeah. And to further uh, your, your comment, Councillor Miles, and if it hasn't been released today, it will be tomorrow or the next day that the town has decided that, you know, we're canceling the Jamboree again, which was slated for August, which is much later than uh, this date right here. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it would not seem correct to... Uh, to put the May date in there. So uh, what should we do on this, Leanne, an, uh, an amendment? Um, what, what's your recommendation on this? Because I, I believe that people might be open to considering October, but I think we would need that to come back to us at a later date. I would recommend that we can either pass an amendment to remove the May date, or we can uh, vote this resolution down and create a new one with the October date uh, stipulating um, subject to COVID-19 um, developments or restrictions. Or for it to come, or the October one to come back to council at a later date? We could do that as well. Okay. I, I prefer the, uh, the, uh, the option of striking this one down and, and putting through a, a new motion. So, uh, so first of all, I'll call for the vote. So I'm all in favor. Against? Okay, so the motion is defeated. And could I have somebody make a, a motion regarding the uh, October 9th date to come back to council for approval at a later date? Would you would like to move that, Councillor Wiggins? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll make the motion, uh, Leanne. I'll let you word it, but bottom line is uh, nothing in May. Uh, October will be considered in at our September meeting. You might need a little more time to plan on that. Maybe we should bring it back in August. That would be my recommendation, yes. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay, could I have a seconder on that, please? Councillor Tracy McGibbon, all in favor. Thank you. You only get one vote, uh, Councillor Miles, even though you have two hands up, so, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, item C, request for relief provision of signed bylaw. The motion before us is be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the Art Gallery of Bancroft's request for relief to reduce the required setback for a permanent freestanding sign as proposed. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Count Deputy Mayor and Councillor Caulfield and um, Matt Alden, we will let you speak to this one, please. Good afternoon, Mayor Jenkins and members of council. Um, a request has been brought forward for a new sign under a sign permit um, at the Art Gallery of Bancroft. Um, the only uh, portion of the sign uh, that does not comply with the, the sign bylaw provisions is the, uh, the clearance that they're requesting from the sidewalk. Um, so they have indicated in their letter uh, that a 
uh, a clearance of one meter can be maintained, but any further back from the sidewalk than one meter, uh, it would obstruct the visibility of their sign from the um, Hastings Street North. Um, so the sign is located at 10 Flint Avenue in front of their, their business there. Um, and they would be removing the existing freestanding sign and installing a larger non-illuminated uh, permanent freestanding sign on the property. And uh, we should note that the existing sign is right at the sidewalk edge, is it not? It is, yes. So we're, we will gain some additional clearance with the new sign. That's correct. And the recommendation from staff is to approve of this uh, request? Uh, the recommendation um, is uh, due to the, the location of the adjacent buildings uh, that staff believe that it's a reasonable request. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions for, uh, for Matt on this one? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Passed, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so next item D, a supplement report to alternative voting method for the 2022 municipal election report. Be resolved that the council does hereby approve of a bylaw authorizing electronic voting as the alternative voting method for the 2022 municipal election. Could I have a mover and a seconder on this, please? Uh, Councillor Caulfield and seconded by Deputy Mayor. Okay, Leanne, would you please speak to this report? So as requested at the Committee of the Whole meeting, we went back and provided some additional details as to the methods through which we're able to reach out to voters to educate and uh, provide opportunities for voting through the alternative method. And I would welcome any questions uh, on the report. So, so just one quick point uh, before I get into uh, uh, letting others ask on it. You're referring it to alternative. This will really be the primary method, correct? So the language of alternative is used in the Municipal Elections Act as any alternative to a traditional paper ballot. So should uh, council elect to use a method that differs from that traditional paper ballot, they have to pass an alternative voting method bylaw, so we would do the same for vote by mail. Right, so that would mean that the uh, the paper ballot will be gone. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I, I just find the, the wording, I know it's a municipal act to be, it Im almost implies that it's an alternative to what we already have is not a replacement uh, to what we have there. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this? Councillor Wiggins, please. Uh, as I say, uh, I just had the same question with the alternative uh, thanks for the clarification on that. Um, and I'm sorry that my, for some reason, I can't get your report. So I couldn't uh, read it at this point. However, my main concern, which I stated before, is that we do provide alternatives for the people that do not, are not electronic savvy. And as long so, as that's well available for everyone, I, I will support it. Okay, I'll, I'll read to you just what we have here it says most electronic uh, electronic voting periods are open for a two week period. Staff will suggest that the voter device be available to voters the weekend prior to the election and one week night during each week of the voting period and on election day to ensure electors who cannot attend the municipal office during the hours of operation have an opportunity to attend. So by attending on election day, it was very similar to the old days when there was no advanced voting whatsoever, uh, et cetera. And just to clarify, uh, be available to voters the weekend prior to the election and one week night during each week of the voting period. How many weeks is there in the voting period too? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, That's correct. so you, okay, so the weekend before, two, two nights, one each week and election day where they could and, come in. And, and during it, office hours at the right. train station. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that was going to be my question. And I was looking <laughs> for that. Where is that in there? Hmm. 
Maybe we didn't clarify, but it does say to ensure electors who cannot attend the municipal office during the hours of operation have an opportunity to attend. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't pick that up. I was wondering why couldn't they just come to the office during regular hours? So they absolutely can. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, okay. I, well, you've answered my question. So, so I think so. that's great and uh, move forward that way. Uh, yeah. Just make sure it's, uh, you know, it's well advertised in the whatever way possible. Thank you very much. Maybe, maybe Leanne, you could, could you just add it to that one paragraph? Cause that contains all the information in that one paragraph, you know, where you give it. Absolutely. Yep. And that way, if anybody goes looking for it, it, it's pretty easy to find and read. So, cause to be honest, as I, I, I didn't pick up on the, uh, that part about being able to come in during regular office hours. So, okay. Uh, Deputy mayor. It's, it, just asking staff. Has there been any comment from, from residents at all? No, there hasn't. I did speak to our municipal affairs uh, representative yesterday and he did indicate that anyone that used it in the previous years is, is for the most part indicating they'll go forward and they expect an increase. So in the last election, approximately half of Ontario municipalities use this method. So they expect yeah. that to increase for the next election. Yeah. Uh, and I think it makes but sense. But from residents, no. No, well. I think it makes sense with COVID the way it is. And I, I think with, with uh, the way you, you can put it there through the media uh, and information for education, that how it works and alleviate any uh, concerns, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. Are you gonna be able, when you set this up to do like a dummy trial test on it to- Abs Absolutely, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Like, were you going to volunteer me for the dummy portion? Okay. Uh, well, I, I figure it's you or I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you for that. I think that alleviates most people's concerns. And so all in favor? And it passes. Thank you. Okay, we have here the council 2020 council remuneration and expenses. Uh, it says here, be it resolved that the council does hereby receive this report for information purposes only. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder to put this on the floor, please? Councillor Miles, seconded by Councillor Caulfield. And uh, Bill, would you just like to give a little brief background on the requirement for this report, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It's a standard report that we put forward uh, every year. Uh, it's really to um, to comply with, uh, well, Compliance and Municipal Act, and uh, obviously our interest in uh, transparency to our constituents um, and no, uh, no issues uh, around it. It's simply a disclosure for transparency and compliance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that? Seeing none, all in favor, please. And it passes. <clears throat> Item F, uh, modernization fund intake to review and implementation stream. Uh, there's three resolutions, so we'll deal with uh, each one uh, separately. And so the first resolution we have before us be resolved, the council, the corporation, the town of Bancroft is hereby support an application made by the town of Bancroft to the Municipal Modernization Program Intake to Implementation Stream for the purpose of acquiring funding to, com to complete select recommendations from the Grant Thornton Report and other related initiatives. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Miles moves, seconded by anybody? Councillor uh, McGibbon, Tracy McGibbon, thank you. And Bill, would you speak on this, please? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, again. Um, yeah, we have a, a great opportunity uh, for additional uh, grant funds. Um, as everyone may recall, um, I've circulated a report previously. The Grant Thornton report that we did uh, was uh, provided, the funding was provided under the Modernization Fund Intake 1. Uh, now Intake 2 has come out, two different streams, um, implementation and review. Um, and we'd like to take advantage uh, of this. Um, uh, the implementation, recommendation number one, deals with the implementation stream, meaning that we can get some funding if we're successful to be able to help us with some of the maybe more complex initiatives under the Grant Thornton Report. 
um, where uh, the, the government has allocated more funds under intake two than they did under intake one. I think intake one was 12 million, intake two is 44 million. Um, we can do multiple, each organization can do multiple applications um, as well um, in, in a mix of different ways. It'd be helpful if I could, I'll continue uh, addressing really the second and third one because it kind of nips well, in. Well, can we pass this one first? And then, because uh, I think, okay. So is there any questions on this, uh, the implementation phase of this first one? Okay, all in favor. Thank you. So I'll read the second resolution. Be resolved the council of the corporation town of Bancroft is hereby support an application made by the town mm -hmm. of Bancroft to municipal modernization program intake two review stream for the purpose of acquiring funding to complete a review of roads, landfill, and, and building and facilities. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Uh, Deputy uh, Councillor Wiggins and Councillor Miles. Sorry, Bill, we'll let you go to town on this one now. Thank you very much. Uh, same, same context is what I spoke about already. Same grant funding, only this is the second stream, the review stream. So picture, this, is, this would be similar to the Grant Thornton report is we get a third party reviewer to review certain aspects uh, of our operation. Uh, uh, discussing with the management team, um, the roads manager uh, put forth his uh, interest in looking at roads and landfill uh, for uh, you know, uh, cost reviews, cost opportunities, um, the value added uh, aspects uh, of, of that. Um, and then the second um, one, uh, buildings and facilities, the fire chief uh, put that idea through, uh, which is a great idea. Um, this responds to building and facilities. This responds to the last budget session that we had where um, I believe that Deputy Mayor uh, put forth that he would like to see a, kind of like a strategic review of our uh, 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 real estate portfolio um, so I'm hoping we can um, uh, um, partition this particular uh, application to revolve around that interest of, uh, of the councillors. That, so that's what that one is. Um, so there's two different uh, potentially separate uh, applications uh, or, or perhaps one around those, around those areas. So uh, my only question before I open it up is at our community of the whole meeting, and, and maybe it's implied in here, uh, because of the overlap between uh, uh, roads and parks, is is parks implied within the buildings and facilities? No, um, the buildings facilities specifically um, is looking at a kind of a strategic review of our real estate. Okay. Um, what I would suggest um, that the roads, landfill, parks would be part of that. Um, review right that okay that's fine we just yeah the word the word parks is not in here yeah and because of the correlation between uh, uh roads and parks it would make sense to me that we would do both of those at the uh, the same time so uh, other comments on this please anybody so Le leanne to to add the word parks in here, do we need to do anything or? No, I think we can add, simply add parks into the resolution if everyone is comfortable with that. Sure, I am fine, everybody good? Okay, thank you. So all in favor? Thank you, pass. Uh, the third one is be resolved that Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft does hereby support an allocation for the remaining unconditional modernization efficiency funding provided by the province in 2019 in accordance with Schedule A to the Modernization Grant Intake 2 report uh, reviewed by Council on March 9th, 2021. That would happen to be today. Uh, so could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Tracy McGibbon. So maybe, uh, Bill, if you'd go over this one in a little bit more detail, I got a little lost on, yeah. on this okay. one here. Okay, so just, just thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just as a backdrop, uh, one of the conditions of uh, applying for uh, a grant is that we've either consumed the efficiency fund that we received in March, 2019, 
or there's uh, or it's being encumbered by by projects that are that are moving forward. So just from a, um, a recall standpoint, uh, March 2019, Town of Bancroft received $498,000 under the efficiency fund. Um, and uh, so, so, so in order to have a successful application, we need again council's support that that we will um, that we will spend the money that that we've received to date. Um, at the end of 2020, we have uh, $397,000 left as part of that efficiency fund. We've consumed a hundred, a little over $100,000 already, and so Schedule A points to um, points to potential uh, spending against that $397,000. The first chunk is what we've approved in, in, in the budget um, already, um, which is a total of $335,000. There's a number of projects there. Uh, just to rest everyone's, uh, make everyone rest easy. Uh, for example, the water meter automation project, that's a, a budget allocation. We, we, we intend to do the efficiency fund. However, before we go forward with that project specifically, obviously we're gonna see council's approval uh, on that. So this is just like a budgetary uh, allocations, okay? Um, Great, thank you. Okay. I, can, I, I, I fully understand now, got it. Uh, any questions from anybody? Okay, all, seeing none, all in favor? Thank you, passed. Thank you. Okay. Um, item G, letter from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing 2021 COVID recovery funding for municipalities program. The resolution before us is be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby received a letter dated March 4th, 2021 from Minister Steve Clark of the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing with respect to the 2021 COVID-19 recovery funding uh, municipalities program. And uh, could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Miles and Councillor Caulfield. I, I know you've blacked out there, Bill, but did you want to make some comment on this as well? Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't put that forward. Uh, okay, I, I, well, you know, you and I just chatted about this letter. This is a, an additional 10,548 that was not expected, um, um, not tied to any other program that we were aware of, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong uh, re uh, report. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I apologize. You're, you're dead on. I, I would have addressed that. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. It, it's, um, it's, it, it's something we didn't apply for, the $10,000. It, um, so to speak, landed, landed on, on, on our lap. Uh, very nice to see. Um, already we have close to, um, we received $125,000 under the COVID relief uh, uh, last year, um, not applying for it. We received another 200, we received another $166,000 that we applied for. Uh, this is an additional uh, $10,000 that we received uh, indication of just a few uh, days ago. Uh, so it's really nice to see. Um, and uh, this is aside from the transit side. The transit side, uh, there's a little bit more happening there. This is aside from the transit perspective. Right. And if you read the letter, uh, it's, uh, I believe it's based on uh, how good or how bad your area is doing with respect to COVID cases. And then I believe the criteria for distributing it, which, you know, we're never going to, uh, you know, kick a gift horse in the mouth, but it goes back to how many allocation formulas are done that we uh, that we question and that we hopefully will be working on the near, very near future with respect to OSIF and OMPF, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so anyway, that's my two cents on it. So anyway, um, all in favor? Okay. Thank you, pass. The next one, item H, letter from Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, be it resolved the Council of Corporation Town of Bancroft is hereby received a letter from the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs for information purposes only. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that one, please? Moved by Councillor Caulfield, second by uh, Councillor Wiggins. And Leanne, would you like to speak on this, please? 
we would normally include letters like this in consent, but I just wanted to make sure that it was brought to uh, council and the public's attention. We do get a lot of inquiries on this topic in the office and through the farmer's market group. So we just uh, wanted to get the word out there that there are new rules effective last year, but many are not aware with respect to the opportunity to um, do home-based businesses that um, cook food. So simply there for council's information, but if you hear anything or you have any um, inquiries, uh, we do get, like I said, we do tend to get a lot of inquiries this time of year. So just wanted to make sure that the information was out there. Right. Any questions from anybody? Okay, seeing none, all in favor. Thank you. Um, okay, item I, letters to the town of Bancroft, the BBI levy and budget slash seasonal businesses. Uh, says here, draft resolution be resolved. The council receives the letters from the BBIA dated March 1st, 2021 with respect to the BIA budget and seasonal businesses. And further that letters of response be prepared on behalf of council. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder on this one, please? Councillor Caulfield and seconded by anybody? Uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, so, Bill, you're still in the uh, the background there. So this letter has been received. Uh, I know that uh, there's been some further discussions. I've had some discussion. I just wanted to, to know if you'd like to sort of, and I saw some letters back and forth today, if you'd like to just sort of bring this up to the uh, the latest and on everything. Well, just uh, just the, the, the inception of, the, of this council uh, during the budget uh, session, we're looking at uh, potentially um, an 18 percent increase of the BIA levy, um, and uh, council thought it's uh, potentially wise to um, to uh, reduce that amount, uh, so there's less impact on the uh, business community. Uh, we put a recommendation through to the uh, BIA committee, uh, and that letter is a response to 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 a recommendation. Um, since then. Um, uh, both the, uh, the the CEO uh, of the BIA and myself, and and as you said, Mr. Mayor uh, yourself, we've had some uh, really excellent excellent dialogue uh, on uh, on a, a hopefully a satisfactory conclusion. And I'm not sure if we're there yet. I noticed a few more emails uh, during this session, but uh, we're working toward a good uh, good satisfactory mutual uh, beneficial uh, conclusion to um, to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's moving in the right direction. Thank you. So, uh, Leanne, the next letter was addressed to you. Maybe you'd like to give us the, the Coles Notes version of your interpretation of that on the seasonal business. Absolutely. So this is a discussion that we've had in previous years as well uh, with the BIA with respect to the uh, per permitting uh, seasonal businesses on public property. So we understand the concerns with respect to uh, the fact that businesses are, um, you know, renting buildings, purchasing buildings and have those overhead fixed costs that they have to incur in order to do business. And that's uh, a concern that's been brought forward before. And again, um, in this letter, uh, we had put a call out for anyone else interested in setting up a seasonal business on town property. Uh, to date, we haven't had any letters of interest. We have the, the balance of the week to receive those. Right. Uh, any comments or questions on that? Just one question. Yes. Uh, if, if someone wants to put a business such as what we've had last year on private property, if they work with the, the, the landowner, uh, can they legally put it there then? Absolutely. And that's the, tradi the traditional use of our hawkers and peddlers program. Mm -hmm. uh, and our, our licensing for uh, food vendors has been for food vendors on private property. So they come to an understanding with a private property owner and um, rent uh, or lease or have some sort of arrangement there that's mutually beneficial. And then we provide the appropriate license pending uh, review from the fire department and the health unit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the comment I'd like to make is, you know, at one time we had three locations and two of those have disappeared. And so uh, 
we decided not that this was the only potential location for that anybody could potentially operate. There has been some changes or upcoming changes to the uh, the use of adjacent property to here that I think we need to consider. And also, uh, I would like to remind everybody that uh, last year, uh, when we did do the particular uh, uh, the occupation that was on this, it was set up as a trial. Okay, it was nothing that was etched in stone. So I sit. So if we have asked staff to look at various options, et cetera, uh, maybe different types of permits, whether they be shorter duration permits, et cetera, that uh, since we only have one location, um, that it might be available uh, to others. And, uh, you know, I don't think we want to get into the position where because we've let somebody use it, that they automatically believe that that's, uh, you know, etched in stone forever and ever. So, uh, but that's why I bring up the point that last year was viewed as a trial and we've received comments, et cetera. And staff will be working on trying to uh, come up with some policies. And I believe you were also going to uh, take some time on this and see what's happening in other municipalities with respect to this. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so all in favor receiving. Pass. Thank you. Okay. Notices of motion. There is none. Uh, consent agenda. Approval of consent agenda. Be it resolved that the items listed under the consent agenda items 13B to 13S be received by the Corporation of Town of Bancroft for information. Before we uh, put this on the table, is there any in there that people would like to pull out and have dealt with separately? Okay, seeing none, uh, could I have a mover and a seconder on this? Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Caulfield. Um, all in favor, please? Thank you. Um, item 14, community announcements and events. Well, a little thin on these these days in the COVID world, but is there anything anybody wanted to chat about with, with respect to community announcement or events? I did mention our decision with respect to the uh, the Jamboree today. And uh, Leanne, has that gone out yet, that press release? That press release is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. So we'll put out the highlights of council today. We will mention it and then we'll put the press release out tomorrow. So I'll circulate that to council in advance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Did anybody have anything they wanted to put in at this particular point? Councillor Caulfield. Just that a uh, little bit of, you know, hope is on the horizon thing. Um, Bancroft has successfully hosted the first COVID vaccination clinic in our area, and there is another scheduled, um, which is full to capacity, as I understand it. So um, this is good news that for the folks who are choosing to move forward with vaccination, um, you know, there's, there's light at the end of that tunnel finally, cause it's been a really long, dark tunnel. So <laughs> just that's something positive that's happening in our community. And I want to put that out there. Yeah. And as I mentioned, my opening remarks, they're, uh, hoping to finalize a much larger scale, um, operation within the, the town. They're just securing the final location and working out all the details, et cetera. So we will, we'll hear on that. So, Okay. If there's nothing else, we will move on to the bylaws, first, second, and third reading. Be it resolved that the following bylaws be introduced and read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstand, notwithstanding. Bylaw number 15-2021 being a bylaw to authorize electronic voting as an alternative voting method for the 2022 municipal election. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Deputy Mayor and Councillor Miles, all in favor. Thank you kindly. So we have a closed session of council. I will read the resolution there before we move in. Moving into closed session, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby move into closed session Pursuant to the Municipal Act SO 2001, Section 239-2K, position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board, general nature, West waste export services, Bancroft business improvement area. And could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Caulfield and seconded by... 
Councillor Wiggins, all in favor, thank you. And Leanne, you will do your thing? I will. I'm just going to end our live stream.